thank you for joining us for this episode of The Doctor is In. My name is Basil Jallad. I am one of the medical oncologists at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, and I am joined by Dr. Tibor Kovac uh, from uh, Surgical Oncology. So, Dr. Kovac, would you please introduce yeah. yourself? Hi, all. I'm Tibor Kovac. I'm a consultant oncoplastic breast uh, surgeon at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi and chief of breast surgery. And it's a pleasure to uh, be together with my colleague, uh, Dr. Jalad, uh, to talk about innovations in uh, breast cancer surgery and breast cancer management in general. Absolutely, yes. I'm so excited for this episode. Um, we will be touching base what new for breast cancer surgery, what's new in the uh, medical field. Dr. Tibor, can you walk us uh, a little bit uh, toward where, how it started maybe 30, 40 years ago with the surgical techniques then and how we are now, uh, you know, where we at with the surgery out, uh, techniques? Yeah, thank you. So um, in the last 20, 30 years, um, I believe that breast cancer surgery has significantly changed um, and what we were doing long time ago, it has completely almost disappeared. Um, and nowadays uh, we do a completely different approach towards uh, how we surgically manage uh, breast cancer. Um, this pathway started with the, the radical uh, mastectomies, the complete removal of the breast, even with the uh, removal of the chest wall muscles. Uh, and nowadays we are reaching the stage of uh, performing uh, far less surgery in what regards the breast part of the operations and also far less surgery in what regards the uh, armpit uh, part of the surgery. And hopefully soon we'll reach the stage of where maybe in certain cases we can avoid surgery for uh, breast cancer patients. And that's amazing. I, I mean, more and more it's, uh, we're doing less and less, which is good for patients who needs less and we are more aware of who needs more. And uh, that's, that's the good thing about tailoring therapy for, for our breast cancer patients. So I think the uh, big changes are related to uh, how um, uh, maybe also the order of the treatments are uh, delivered to patients. Quite often, uh, in order to do less surgery, we would change the order of the treatment. We do more systemic uh, treatments um, uh, and deliver um, a different approach uh, where uh, by using uh, systemic medical treatments, we can downsize and downstage uh, the tumors. Uh, in order to offer a less radical uh, appro surgical approach to our, our patients. And this is where uh, we help patients to reintegrate better to their uh, normal life after they finished their treatment to do not in, and not to live anymore with the consequences or sequelae of uh, uh, the previously known radical surgical approaches. True indeed. I mean, I'm involved uh, from the medical aspect, uh, it's great that we work as a team. I mean, here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, almost every case gets discussed between surgery and medical oncology and uh, plastic surgery and, radi and radiation oncology and uh, radiology to come up with uh, the right plan for uh, our patients specifically individualized for them. From medical oncology point, also a lot has changed. We used to say, almost every patient gets chemotherapy because that's what they we can provide them uh, to improve cure rates. But now we have hormone therapy for hormone positive breast cancers. We have um, uh, HER2 target therapy for that type of, uh, subtype of cancer. We have immunotherapy for triple negative breast cancer. So every subtype that we were able to identify has a tailored therapy for them. And that helps a lot to improve cure rates, maybe reduce the, the, the intensity of the chemotherapy we can give yet not affect our cure rates or even uh, better maybe efficacy and that will help with surgery and long-term outcomes. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And uh, we also use far more imaging nowadays uh, in order to determine exactly the extensiveness of the disease. Uh, we routinely use PET scans to stage our patients and um, MRI scans quite a lot. Again, for uh, assessing the breast, uh, kind of creating a three-dimensional image of the breast uh, when uh, the surgeon can uh, plan exactly what procedure is the most suitable for our patients, what is the tumor's relationships with the nipple areola complex, how can be the majority of the breast uh, saved, preserved, in order to offer also um, acceptable cosmetic outcomes of our for 
uh, our patients. And this is kind of uh, part of this reintegration into the, uh, the normal life as before uh, the treatment started. Um, nowadays, uh, all of our patients, 95% of our patients are offered breast reconstruction in case of uh, needing a mastectomy. This is amazing. Because quite often we still have to offer patients a mastectomy based on the extensiveness of the disease, of the type of, type of the disease. Um, but all these patients will benefit from uh, the reconstructive uh, procedures, what we can uh, deliver, offer together with uh, plastic surgeon colleagues, um, no matter whether it's an implant based or whether it's an own tissue autologous uh, reconstruction. This is great. 95% uh, of our patients are offered some sort of uh, reconstructive surgery. Uh, that's important for patients feeling well-being after surgery. They want to go back to their life um, and uh, you know just feel that they are back on track and that definitely will be part of the help they can um, uh, they can be provided we also uh, have specific uh, tests that we can do after surgery to help de-escalate therapy i mean yes we have so many drugs now that we can provide but do we is it a necessity for them to uh, be given all that. I mean, yes, uh, uh, chemotherapy is all under our disposal, hormone therapy, target therapy, immunotherapy, um, but the question, do they need all this? So after surgery, once the patient recovers, we have special tests that now we provide uh, that can help tailor treatment. Do they need or can we avoid chemotherapy? Is there any benefit of that? On the long term, how much is the risk of recurrence? And that could help us even to do more or less of what the patient would need uh, for the upcoming months. So kind of this de-escalation, which I was mentioning about surgery, I guess it's also uh, valid for um, the other um, arms of uh, the um, multidisciplinary uh, treatment approach, mm -hmm. medical oncology, so drug treatment, or uh, even radiation. Um, certain things have changed also there too, um, and the kind of, uh, less maybe less aggressive treatments are offered and more um, uh, selected uh, treatment modalities based on the type of the tumor and um, that's um, in the benefits of uh, our patients right and yeah. cleveland also we offer some uh, supportive uh, surgical techniques to help lessen the the problems that can happen from uh, surgery exactly, afterwards. Yeah. Can you tell us a so, bit more about so this? So that's another important aspect, and this is where uh, it comes in the armpit part, the axillary part of the surgery itself. Uh, traditionally, a um, long time ago, we were performing uh, the so-called axillary lymph node clearance, the full removal of all the armpit lymph nodes for each and every patient who was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Uh, nowadays, this has changed, uh, and gradually uh, we reached a stage where we would remove only a couple of lymph nodes, um, assess them in the lab, and uh, if there is no uh, involvement uh, or just a very small amount of uh, uh, cancer in the lymph nodes, we do not have to perform any more um, uh, armpit clearance. And the benefit of this is that patients will have less side effects. For example, if you have to have a full clearance of the lymph nodes, the uh, rate of uh, swelling of the arm, the lymphedema, is about 25-30 percent. Uh, with the less extensive surgery, which when you remove only a couple of lymph nodes, um, so-called central lymph node biopsy technique or targeted dissection, uh, you will have a rate of about five, six percentages of uh, lymphedema. So that's significantly uh, lowered. And uh, patients, again, this helps patients with their recovery and reintegration in their uh, normal life to be able to go back to their work, what they were doing originally. So that's kind of quite important. Um, cancer treatment nowadays focuses more on on quality of life than before, mm -hmm. and um, surgeons uh, are focusing on um, all these aspects, breast il um, and armpit related aspects of surgery, uh, which uh, gives the best uh, oncological uh, outcomes, at the same time best uh, aesthetic, cosmetic and functional outcomes. Correct. I agree. I mean, c protecting patient quality of life over the long term in, in those surgical techniques are very important. We do also offer cool capping during chemotherapy to protect from hair loss or, or you know, long term effect on the on the hair. 
We do offer uh, ovarian protection or suppression. We do internal refer to fertility clinic to help preserve their ovarian function or do egg freezing to help them with the, you know, fertility uh, planning or pregnancy planning over the, um, you know, in the upcoming future, especially, and that's very important for our patients, uh, uh, at the younger population who still have plans for, you know, uh, for having a bigger family or pregnancies in the future. There are two other aspects which I want to mention um, as innovations in uh, breast uh, cancer surgery. One is the um, um, possibility of offering our patients who they need an armpit lymph node clearance, uh, a preventative measure, a preventative surgical measure, which can help uh, to reduce that risk of lymphedema, which is about 25%. Um, and uh, this procedure is a microvascular uh, procedure which is, uh, offers uh, patients to rejoin their uh, lymphatic vessels. It is a procedure done under the microscope, uh, done by our plastic surgeon colleagues. And uh, after the lymph nodes are removed from the armpit, then the uh, remaining lymphatic vessels are rejoined um, uh, under the microscope. And uh, by this, we are kind of restoring the circulation uh, of the uh, lymphatic circulation from the arm towards the chest. And this is something which is very promising and can reduce the risks of lymphedema on a long term. This is amazing. So this was one of the aspects which I wanted to mention as an innovation. And I'm so excited even to announce that at Cleveland, we just started this year also to have clinical trials that even things that are not available as a standard of care is an option for our uh, uh, patients who live in, uh, in UAE. So I'm the principal investigator in one of the uh, global highly regarded clinical trials called Cambria 2. And this is a trial to in exploring an innovative hormonal therapy uh, uh, for patients with early breast cancer, hormone positive breast cancer. And this is very important because we believe, despite all what we have talked about and mentioned, there is still unmet needs. And there is still, unfortunately, some patients that could recur even 20 years uh, after uh, acquiring hormone-positive uh, breast cancer, especially if they are high risk, have lymph nodes involved uh, and uh, like large tumors. And the histology shows that they are th the aggressive type. And so here uh, we, uh, we do offer a different type of uh, hormonal drug, comparing it to standard of care, and that we have a high belief in. It's already the family of those family of drugs are used in the advanced setting and proven that they are superior. And now we are bringing it earlier to improve cure rate, not just control the disease. And that is another, you know, future even innovative technique that could help improve uh, uh, outcomes even more and more. Yeah, and I believe that um, patients who they choose to uh, have their uh, diagnosis management treatment at Cleveland Clinic, they have uh, their most benefit is that uh, they are not treated by um, sole um, surgeon or medical oncologist. Um, um, they are treated by a team of uh, specialists involved uh, um, in the diagnostics, so radiologists, pathologists who are experts in breast, uh, who they do kind of purely uh, breast pathology, and by a medical team, um, including medical radiation and surgical oncologists, plus the plastic surgical team. So you kind of get um, a package deal um, uh, in what regards your uh, cancer management. And uh, that's very important because you have lots of places where you just uh, have one or the other specialist available and uh, it is um, quite difficult to um, reach good results on a long term if you are not treated on a multidisciplinary level. And this is the great advantage of Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi and the breast service from here. True. I mean, we've summarized the latest innovative techniques that we can, that is available in across the world, but also available in Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, even in the, uh, uh, in the medical field. Indeed, Cleveland Clinic, you know, uh, approach is, is not like one person. It is an army of services to heal a person, not just to, you know, uh, control a disease. And healing process takes a lot of people to be involved. Even we, we have, you know, uh, we have, uh, we've added we've, uh, to our treatment plans, uh, 
things that could help patient mentally. We have psychotherapy here. We have we do Reiki sessions at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. We uh, we have physical therapy. We have uh, occupational therapy. A lot of different ancillary services at our disposal for the care of our patient to help them go through this journey and with the least you know possible problems. And so um, so improving cure rate, quality of life and he help with the patient healing process. So this is all great news. I'm so happy with our discussion that we had today. Um, now, Dr. Tibor, what message you want to uh, deliver to our audience regarding breast cancer screening and prevention? So um, I believe that um, um, no matter what kind of uh, excellent treatments we have, surgery, medical radiation, oncology, still uh, screening and early detection is crucial. So the uh, early detected cancer is a curable disease. The late detected cancer, it might not be entirely curable. And this is what is the most important message. Uh, um, ladies, especially above the age of 40, uh, they would should regularly um, attend um, breast cancer screening, which is usually mammography plus minus ultrasound scan, uh, even from earlier age, um, for ladies who they might have some family history of breast or ovarian cancer. And this can um, um, reassure patients um, that there is nothing wrong or um, it can detect an early stage uh, disease uh, which is curable usually. And that's the main um, and most important message um, about uh, prevention and um, related to um, the successful treatment of breast cancer. I agree. I mean we cannot ignore the fact that breast cancer is the most common type of cancer across the globe. But we need to work together from the health sector, patients, you know, you know, be feeling proactive, being self-responsible to, to, to get this, uh, the, um, you know, screening done at the right time. We have all those tools available in UAE. Uh, we just need to uh, start using them to the best uh, of uh, patient care to try to prevent this problem even before it becomes cancer because we can detect uh, those lesions uh, or you know what we see in, in screening as m calcifications or changes in the breast or you know uh, precancerous lesion before even it turns into cancer or detecting them early so we can improve uh, cure rates um, uh, on the long term. With that, thank you for being with us today at uh, this episode of The Doctors Is In.